Okay, what we did today in class, this is Monday, the 11th of January, 2016. And what we did today in class is we learned about how to do balancing with a new strategy that will help in certain situations, not all, but it will certainly help with many of the homework problems that you're going to have tonight and tomorrow night. So the first little trick is water is almost always written this way. Yeah. However, if you will write it this way, this is still water. And this hydrogen is no longer considered hydrogen. It's part of the hydroxide ion, OH. Okay? So you might want to write down that OH is equal to the hydroxide ion. And you're going to get a chart of ions tomorrow, so you'll be able to identify these more easily. But OH is the hydroxide ion. And phosphate, that's a common one that we wind up having in several different chemicals. And the phosphate is a ratio of 1 to 4 for phosphorus and oxygen. But instead of balancing both phosphorus and oxygen separately, we get to balance them together provided that the phosphate is on both sides of the equation. So this only works when these guys are on both sides of the equation. So let's, let's apply these right away using tonight's homework, and let's see how it works. Here is lead nitrate, and let me run back there and get a pointer. Copy, and... So, yeah. here is our, our SE. What is the SE? Skeleton equation. So, skeleton equation has no coefficients. It's just what the reactants and the products are. So, now we go down here and we start doing our balancing. So, I'm going to balance this at the board and... So you won't hear me quite as well in the recording. But right here, I'm looking at lead. And I look at lead on the left and lead on the right. There's one on each side. So I don't really need to do anything about the lead. But now, instead of using nitrogen, I'm going to look at this whole thing and call it nitrate, which is its name. And you'll see nitrate over here as well. Well, I can balance those real easily. So I'm going to put a 2 over here because I get two nitrates and two hydrogens. So two of these guys and two of these. So now I go to hydrogen, and I just did that coefficient of 2 on the nitric acid, and so that made two hydrogens here. And I'm kind of lucky because when I... Oh, not that. Dang. Okay. When I, when I did the uh, 2 over here, that made the 2 to balance the chlorine. And I think that I am in balance, so I'm going to go ahead and check my atoms now. So let's check for lead. Lead on the left is 1. Lead on the right is 1. I'm good there. Now when I look at hydrogens, hydrogens on the left is 2. And hydrogens on the right is 2. Okay? So we're good on hydrogens. For nitrates, the same thing. We got two nitrates over here because of the coefficient, and we have two nitrates over here because of the subscript of two. So the nitrates are two on each side, and now the chlorines are two over on the left because of the coefficient, this two, and we have two chlorides on the right because of that subscript. And so I can see that I am totally balanced top to bottom. And now I know that I've done it right.
So if you can count those atoms, like we were doing last Friday, with that sheet that I handed out, uh, just a moment, I'm going to pause the recording and talk to the class. Okay, in the second equation, we'll move along a little bit faster. We have one calcium on the left and one calcium on the right, so I'm okay there. One hydrogen on the left, and I see over here two hydrogens. So I'd want to put a coefficient over here to get two hydrogens. And now with the two hydrogens, I also get two chlorides. So I look over on the right, and there is a subscript on this chlorine, meaning that I have two chlorines on the right. So it looks like we've got everything balanced. Let's check it out. I see calcium for one on the left and one on the right. And I'm going to go ahead and put those coefficients in now. And I see hydrogen on the left with two, and I see hydrogen on the right with two. This hydrogen because of the subscript, and this hydrogen because of the coefficient. And the last one is the chlorine, which we got a lucky balance with, because when we balance the hydrogens, we also wound up balancing the chlorines. All right, so let's go to the next problem. And this is really a good one for using the different um, ions, the polyatomic ions, the ones that have more than one atom in them. The hydroxide, and you see how here the water sticks out with hydrogen on the left and OH hydroxide on the right. So I'm going to balance with those polyatomic ions. So we'll start with calcium. I always like to start at the far left. Calcium on the left is 1, calcium on the right is 3 because of that subscript. And so, whoops, let's put that back. Let's go over here and put in our 3. And now we have how many hydroxides? 6, yes. The subscript of 2 times the coefficient of 3. Okay? So over here, how am I going to get 6 hydroxides? Put a 6, sure. And remember, this part of the water is the hydroxide ion, and this part of the water is the hydrogen ion. We don't count that hydrogen. We count that hydrogen, which I'll point to, we count this hydrogen, but this doesn't count as hydrogen anymore. Okay? That hydrogen is hydro it's part of the hydroxide ion, which has a specific structure of OH. Like the phosphate is one phosphorus and three oxygens. There's a ratio of the atoms in the, in the uh, ions as well as in the entire equation. We have to have both in balance. Okay, so hydroxides are good, I think. And now I'm going to look at my hydrogens. I have three on the left. I don't count these hydrogens, okay, because they're part of the hydroxide. And they already got balance. So the loose hydrogens, so to speak, are three. And I have six over on the right hand side. So if I put a three here, whoops. If I put a 2 here, wow, that was a bad mistake. All right, so now the 2 times the 3 gives us 6 hydrogens here, and this coefficient here gives us 6 of these hydrogens, and these hydrogens are part of the hydroxide. So when I did the, the 2 out front here, I also balanced my phosphates. The PO4, there's 2 of those. And over here, there's two of them because of the subscript. And so I think I'm in balance, so I'm going to check it out. Let's go ahead and put in the numbers. Calcium on the left is 3. Calcium on the right is 3. Hydroxide on the left is 2. Hydroxide, whoops, 2 times 3. Yeah, 
almost got suckered myself. Okay, hydroxides, there's two here, but there's a coefficient of three. Two times three is six. So, there we go. We got hydroxides on the left of six, and hydroxides on the right of six. The hy hydrogens, the three dudes, you got six here and six here. So, that's where we'd have our hydrogens. Oops, let's do this all in red. So that's six and six. And the phosphates, we have two on the left and two on the right. And so we're good. Okay, someone said eight. What were you looking at to get the eight? Can I help you with that? Oh, you're multiplying the four times two. Okay, good. So that's that's a common problem, very common problem when people are just getting used to these. So remember that this guy is four oxygens hooked to the. Oh my! I said phosphate with PO3, PO4. And just to give you an idea of why that's the way it is, phosphorus. Whoops. Where where do we have? Uh, yeah, phosphorus has four oxygens. Or the our phosphorus. Yeah has four oxygens, one, two, three, four, hooked up to it. So it is a unit. So when you look at this, it says the four subscript on the phosphate. Don't think that there's four phosphates if there's only four oxygens in the phosphate line. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. I hope I can put that up for you. Yeah. Because that's something that you'll make a mistake of frequently if you don't understand what this means. Okay? So as you get more comfortable with it, that will be the way we want to do it. So in your homework tonight, tonight's homework, we always want to see the skeleton equation. Okay? Oh boy, I'm having a hard time getting that to cooperate. Skeleton equation and the balanced equation. And then if you want to use this to balance the equation, that's great. If you don't, at least use it to check your numbers at the end. And that's it, folks.